So what I'm going to do is go to the annotate tab and then under here in the dimension section, you're going to see spot elevation. Now what we can do is click on this and then we can hover over any area in the model and it's going to give us a value of what that floor level is. You can see that as we go up the stairs, it's going to give us the floor level of each of these stairs. So we can see that they're 175 millimeters apart. And then coming down here, you're gonna see that this entrance has a floor level of zero. This master bedroom has a floor level of zero. The walk-in robe has a zero. And then up here in the ensuite, it steps up to 360. And up here, the stairs, we go up, it's 1400 and so forth. So we need to show those things in the floor plan to represent them being at different floor levels. So I'm just gonna place this in the master bedroom and I usually like to place these underneath the room tags and we don't need the leader or the shelter. So what I'm going to do is just place that right here and you have to choose a direction for that. I'm just gonna put it on this side. In fact, we might even edit this family and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So that's already got the finished floor level there. It's the spot elevation of that floor, but it's not telling us that this number here is a finished floor level. All it's saying is that it's got this weird icon and then the number zero. If a client or a builder looks at this, they might have no idea what this is. So we're going to have to create a custom spot elevation. If we select this elevation marker, you'll notice that we've got a number of different options inside of this family. If we wanted to, we could make this a beam elevation, whatever that may be. We can make this a crosshair, which is a relative level, and we could make this the vertical type of family. But for us, we're just gonna keep this as target and project. And what you're gonna to see to the side under the properties is a custom parameter that is embedded within this family. And that is the text group. And you would have learned about this if you looked at the lessons before. What we can do is add a prefix or a suffix to the value shown here. So the value is the spot elevation of the finished floor level. So we can actually add a uh, prefix of it that says FFL to say finished floor level. That's what that stands for. So if I apply that, you'll see that now shows up as FFL. So the value there, which is zero, is going to show up and so is the FFL. But it's just this icon that I don't really like. Instead, I think what we want is for this FFL text just to be boxed up. If we edit the type of this family, there's a few different settings that we can change. We can change the size of the text and what we want to actually do is make sure that the background is set for transparent. I don't really like that um, text background being opaque. So I'm just gonna apply that and you'll see that's changed that. You can see under symbol that We've got this spot elevation with the target field. And if we check the drop down menu, we've also got these other elevations inside of this family. I'm just gonna make this none, and you'll see that that gets rid of that stupid looking symbol. I also wanna add a border to this, similarly to what we've got above it with the meter squareage. And you'll notice that there is no text border option for this system family. And being that we can't actually edit the system family, there's not really a workaround for that at the moment. Not that I know of at the moment anyways, but we're gonna continue looking through these options. We also want this to show two decimal places like the meters above or the, the meterage above. So we can change this under units format and change the format to not use the project settings and to round up to two decimal places. Let's click okay and apply that. Now we've got FFL 0.00. .00. I'm also going to change this to meters so that it matches the meter squareage above. And that won't show much here, but when we go into the 1400 mils or whatever, it will show us 1.4 meters instead of 1400 mils. The text size, I also want to match that square meterage as well. So I'm just gonna change the text size to a three mil text size. And there we go. I'll click okay. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what we need to do is place this same system family on some of these other places as well. So we'll use the spot elevation or press EL to bring that up. And you can see that we can place this now under a few different places. Now what the issue is, is that that prefix that we put on here is instance based and not type based. So what we might have to do is instead then place that prefix before each and every one of these um, elevation markers. Now I usually wanna place these floor levels um, around where there's a floor level change. So having this in the master bedroom and then this say in the study 
doesn't really look that good because people are going to wonder what's the floor level between these two things. So what I might do is place a floor level symbol here and then another one down by the entrance. And what I can actually do is go to the copy command and just copy this over to the other side. And you're going to see then it keeps that instance base parameter, that prefix, which is great. And I'll put this underneath that entrance room tag and then I'll just copy this one more time outside where this laundry door is. And you can see that that's the same distance between those two. I might even place another one then down here where this step is and then where this step is if we wanted to and then where this step, step is and maybe another one here. Now that doesn't lie on its reference so that's fine. There's no floor there. But what we're doing is just making it clear where the actual um, floor level changes are within the model and within the building. So then on the level two floor plan, we might just put in a couple more of those spot elevations here as well. You can see that this is showing as 2.8, which is actually relative to the ground floor rather than it being relative to this level. So you can see that's because we've got this set up as the target being the project. If we change this to the target being relative, you're going to see that that now shows as zero. And so we might need to make those same changes as before. Otherwise, what we can do is come back to our target project, duplicate this and call it relative. And we'll make this relative two so that we know that it's a different one. And we're going to delete that other one in a moment. So now we can cha change the elevation base to be relative. We'll apply that. And now it's going to show as being zero. And I'll just make that FFL again. So this can go under the dining spot and I'll place another one out on the balcony. All right, so there we go with that. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.